Welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. A lot of you have asked me to be able to do a video on how I paint the project, and most recently the little Christmas decorations. So today I thought I would show you how to do the Christmas decorations as well as another project that I'm working on, and this one's going to be made out of cedar. So let's get started. Before we start today's video, I've got a real big favor. Recently, YouTube has changed their algorithms. What does that mean? That means that my videos are not being recommended as often as they used to. How do we change that? I need your help in a most urgent way to be able to like this video, share it with as many people as you can, and subscribe by making these three simple changes. It really will trigger those algorithms to be able to get the recommendation back out to everyone in the woodworking community and the CNC world. So if you like the videos that I'm producing, you like my teaching methods, please subscribe, like, and share. Now, let's get back to today's video. To start this project off, this is just a small piece of cedar. Now this is a cedar fin slat, so you know it's very rough material. And what I did is I took it over to the planer and ran it through a couple times and I've got most of the real rough material gone. And for my purpose for this little uh, project, this is going to work out fine. Now before I do any carving, I like to be able to seal the wood because when you carve into this, there's going to be all type of little fraying and little splinters that pop up. By sealing this wood first, it really helps to reduce that. It won't eliminate it, but it will help reduce it. And what I'm going to seal it with is the shellac clear. And I'm going to use this for several different coats because it dries very, very quickly. And I want it to be able to penetrate into this wood as much as I can. The nice thing about it is, as far as cleanup, a little bit of denatured alcohol, and it cleans that brush right up. Now I'm using a much smaller brush than what I normally would, partly for two reasons. One, I don't want to have to clean a great big brush, and two, this is a very small project. Now when you're putting this on, it really doesn't matter as far as being neat. All you want to be able to do is just get a real good coverage. And like I said, this dries very, very quickly. Now, don't laugh. I know some of you are going to make comments about me using this little bitty brush because it takes a lot longer. But for the amount of denatured alcohol to clean it up and the fact that I'm going to be using this for several different coats, this actually works pretty well. And quite frankly, it still doesn't take a lot of time. So that's the first coat. I'm just gonna go ahead and set that right here on my little stand. I'm gonna take a little bit of the denatured alcohol, rinse out the brush. Now I'm just gonna let this soak here because once this dries, I'm going to come right back and put a second coat on it. Now let's turn our attention to the second project. I want to be able to go ahead and laser the um, Christmas ornament so that I can paint that for you. Now this is one of the blanks that I had used before that I had not uh, lasered on. So this is what I'm going to use. And today, since we're just doing the one, I do need to mark the center of this. And to be able to do that, the easiest way is just be able to use this little um, center marker that I made. And guys, it works great. All I need to do is just slip that in, put a line, rotate it, put a line, and that gives me the exact center. I went ahead and opened up Light, 
burn software and I'm just going to come over here and go to the recent projects and I am going to pull in this one right here. So this is the design. It's going to be a Christmas wreath. Let me bring it up so that you can actually see it. That's what I'm going to carve and be able to paint. And just as a reminder, if you didn't see the previous video, this is a four inch circle that is black and that means it's not going to output. I have checked that off. And then I have the blue and this is everything that will engrave and that's all that I want. Now, that is gonna be engraving at 70 inches a minute with my 100% power and this is going to be the center point right here for the project. Now I've already marked on the um, blank my center point so all I need to do is get the laser to line up with this same point. Now you're not going to be able to see the X very clearly but right there is now centered. So now I'm able to go ahead and engrave this Now I'm back at the workbench and I've already put a second coat on and it's actually starting to look really good. And it's a little bit tacky, but I can still touch it and it feels almost dry to the touch. So I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna go ahead and continue on with the painting of the Christmas ornament. Now to be able to paint this, it's actually easier than you think. But what I have is a whole big selection of markers that I use and they work amazing. So all you need to do is get a good selection of the different colors and you're ready to be able to paint. Now what I'm gonna do is start off with the red and I have a fine point. And this allows me to be able to get really into some of these small details because I don't want to cover up the engraved portion. And it's just that easy. All we're really doing is staining the wood. Now I can also go ahead and take care of all of the little berries. And this is a perfect marker for that. Now, as far as the larger areas, I can just switch over and use the other pen and be able to do the same thing. You just be able to paint that right in there. And the nice thing about it is when you finish, it's done. You don't have to worry about anything else. Now, occasionally you'll get a little bit of bleed through, but that's actually pretty rare. The laser itself stops probably 99% of that. Now, can you use the big marker for the berries? Sure you can. You just have to be a little bit more careful, but it works just fine. And the nice thing about this with the different colors I can change the colors of the stars and make a variety of different colors. So I'm using the yellow. Right now I'm using the orange and it's making for beautiful stars. So there you have it. After about 15 minutes, this decoration is actually finished and ready to hang on the tree. Not bad. Nice thing about it is I don't have to worry about it drying. And with these markers, I'm able to do a lot of very fine detail. I'll try to get as close up to the camera as I can so you can see all of the detail. Again, I love working with the laser and I love working with these markers. Next thing I want to do is bring this back over. And this is actually dry now. And I can go ahead and put this onto the CNC machine 
and carve the next project so we can paint this. The project that I'm going to carve today is this vintage truck with the Christmas tree and it says Merry Christmas on it. Now I did not design this. This was a project that I had uh, been able to obtain off of the Inventables uh, forum and this is probably a year or so old that I've had this and I've never carved it. So today I want to take the opportunity to be able to carve this and I only wish that I had uh, remembered who actually designed this and shared it on the Inventables forum. So if you're still out there and you see this video, please leave me a comment so I can give you credit for this wonderful design. I went ahead and secured the wood to the CNC board. I'm going to use the bottom left hand corner today as the XY0 home position. I'm using my bump stops to be able to hold it in place. But on these, they actually used as a clamp. Because when I designed these, I actually put a little groove right here that makes it where it's perfect to be able to hold the material down. So these bump stops are really multifunctional. And I really like having them to be able to hold this down. And it's not going to move at all. All right, I'm going to go ahead and bring down the jog command. I'm going to change this to one inch and I'm going to go ahead and move this down so I can get it real close to my XY0 position. And that actually should be it. I'm going to lower this down at a little bit smaller increments. And yes, I'll need to move that over just a little bit right there come down and my XY zero position now is set because it has a cup and this is lower in the center I'm actually going to go ahead and do my Z probe in this area rather than out on the edge confirm my thickness I'm really not too concerned about this it's not three quarters of an inch but we're not carving all the way through, so that's really not a big factor. We are using the 60 degree V bit, and I'm going to probe. So what I'm going to do is set this again for one inch, and I'm gonna move three inches up. And then I'm going to move a couple inches over. And let me raise this up now. And I'm going to go ahead and do the Z probe. Okay, I've completed the Z probe and I'm actually ready to carve. So I've moved the spindle back over to the XY0 position and I've hit carve. Now, I also wanted to zoom in and show you that I decided to speed this up because 50 inches a minute was far too slow. So, what I'm doing is now increasing the speed up to 100 inches per minute. And that is going to get this done quite a bit faster. So I want to zoom in, show you right there where I've been able to increase the speed. And this is a very nice tool to have in easel. Okay, the project now is finishing up its carve and it's turning out really nice. Keep in mind, this is designed to be a rustic design with the rustic paint job. Project just off the CNC machine. Now, I must tell you, cedar is probably, especially a fence slat, is probably one of the worst woods to be able to use to try to carve. And I wanted to have something that was rather difficult to see just how good or bad we could make this look. So here it is, just off the CNC machine. So I'm going to go ahead now and get set up so we can do some painting. I'm just using the acrylic paints that you can buy at Michael's or Hobby Lobby, even Walmart. And what I'm going to do is just flood these areas with the black paint to begin with. I'm going to have it all into these areas. And I want to be able to work it down into the grooves as much as I possibly can. Because that will help pick up some of the detail. 
And this part you don't have to be neat with, but you do want to have it covered as much as you can. The nice thing about this, this actually goes real quick. Okay, I'm finishing up the black now, and I'm looking to see if I missed any of the little details that I want to be able to make sure that I catch. It looks like I've got all the details that I want colored in. So I'm going to set this brush aside now and we're going to switch to another color. And I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and get the tree done. Okay, I'm finishing up the tree now. So that's two colors done. So we'll set this brush aside. Next color I'm going to do is the red. And all I want to do right now as far as the red is this border so i'm gonna get this done all the way around and flood this little v groove now i'm taking the white and i'm flooding this area around the letters because what i want to be able to have happen is when i'm all finished i want to come back and be able to paint red in the letters on the surface but i want the white to actually be at the border Okay, I'm finishing up the white now, and I think it all looks real good, but I had a big drop right into the black. So I'm going to take the brush that I was using for the black, pull it out of my water, clean it just a little bit, and I'm just going to put the black back in there. So this is really not a catastrophe when something like this happens. And there we go. The drop of the white paint is now taken care of. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and let this dry for a few minutes. Okay, now that it's dry, or <laughs> I should say almost dry, because I really started sanding just a little bit premature. But what the heck, I'm going to go ahead and march on. We're going to sand all of this surface down and clean up all of the excess paint that was on the surface. And this actually is a 60 grit sandpaper that I'm using. So it's actually quite rough. And again, that's in keeping with the whole theme that I want to be able to have a rustic uh, project. Now I'm taking the air compressor and just spraying off all of the excess sawdust to be able to clean it up. And now we can see what it looks like. Well, now that all of that is finished, I actually think it looks pretty good. Now, let's move on to the next step. Now, I did rush it a little bit. The paint was not completely dry. But it's still not bad. Now, I'm going to go back and get the truck painted and these letters painted. And I'm going to use the uh, felt tip marker again. Now this is the same technique that I used on the Christmas decoration. The nice thing about this, you can do a lot of very detailed work without having the normal mess that you would with the paint. And it dries instantly unlike the paint and like i said i rushed this well here's a look at it all finished <laughs> not bad i'm pleased with it i'm gonna go ahead and put a clear coat on this now and get ready to hang it up hi everyone thank you for watching my video today if you like the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it so you'll be notified on the different videos that I upload. Also, check out the videos over here to be able to stay up to date on the happenings in my shop. So again, thank you for watching my videos.